Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you end of rev- end of day review of the European markets on Thursday, 28th of April 2016. Be sure to uh, visit tradesignal.com and download the latest app via the Google Play and Apple Store, and uh, keep up to date with uh, market analysis and commentary via the uh, newest and latest app. Okay, right. Let's start, folks. In terms of European markets, let's just see exactly where they finish. Let's look at the stats. Uh, European markets, FTSE, but basically finishing flat. Basically, uh, as we know, uh, the markets were down quite substantially overnight, and our gap down quite significantly, as uh, as low as the pivot low on the FTSE. I think, if I can recollect, was around the uh, six two forty zone. Uh, the DAX was down quite significantly. The CAC still remains weak, uh, still finished negative. So we had the uh, the swoon from via the BOJ due to a lack of stimulus. Uh, that uh, emanated uh, from uh, the uh, Bank of Japan overnight. Also, with regards to the FOMC, from my understanding, again, the market is open to multiple interpretation and is very subjective in nature. But from my objective or attempted, uh, uh, naive attempted objective uh, understanding, the FOMC was uh, actually hawkish in terms of uh, rate hikes because they omitted the uh, uh, global risk, uh, obviously, uh, parameter. So they certainly seem to be more aware. And also given the fact that oil prices obviously have rallied as well, the deflationary excuse is no longer there. Okay, um, the uh, global risks uh, obviously are no longer there either. Okay, now in terms of economic data, I did cover in terms of midday. Uh, the data that's come out subsequently is uh, the uh, German uh, inflation data that came out more or less in line, although uh, harmonized uh, index of CPI certainly came out slightly weaker uh, uh, on a month and month and a year and year basis, but the CPI data came in basically more or less in line. Now, the initial jobless claims out of the US certainly came out slightly uh, weaker than expected okay came in at 257 versus the 252 and also the uh, ch- continuous jobless claims they came in slightly slightly but more or less basically in forecast but it was a gdp data that everybody was focusing on because the gdp data came in tepid at 0.5 percent as opposed to the expected 0.7 now the latest um, insight on the gdp data i think i've retweeted US, us economic growth cools in the quarter this is from the uh, financial times u.s economy grew at its slowest pace in two years during the first three months of 2016 raising questions over the durability of its seven-year expansion at a time of global uncertainty gross gdp uh, was less than the half the rate set in the previous quarter because of tumbling corporate investment low exports now all this news is basically bearish folks the export numbers are all also held back by a deceleration in consumer spending growth despite rising personal incomes the figures reflect a cautious mood following turbulent global economic and financial conditions early this year. So basically all that QE, QE1, QE2, QE3, and all we do is we get 0.5% GDP. Not exactly fantastic, is it, folks? Okay, so again, from my understanding, uh, I'll bring up the chart of US markets now. I will attempt to do another uh, video on US markets, but for now, my eyes basically remain fixated on this H&S formation. And I'm looking for that gap fill to close below at 2060. Now, given the fact that all the European markets basically close that gap, okay, and I've gone back to neutrality, I'm expecting the US markets to close that gap as well. So I am, uh, obviously I'm talking my book here, but I'm talking my book for a reason because I'm actually bearish in this market. So I'm looking for a flush here, okay, down to that uh, potential 2060 zone. Again, first support zone will be in the 2080 zone and we'll see exactly how the markets react once we get there. Okay, now weaker GDP, okay, again from the US, not exactly helping oil. Uh, One of the main reasons why this market is currently up at this current juncture is due to oil. As I've explained many on many occasions, it's all about the euro, the yen, and oil. Now you can clearly see on the daily chart of uh, oil is, is certainly broken out, broken out above that forty-four dollar level. Now currently testing the forty-six, currently uh, sat at around forty-six dollars. Now the two hundred MA is at forty-six point eight, so not long to go, and that will be the potential top. That will be the pivot high in the markets, from my perspective. And then you will look to get a flush. Okay, that's why another trade that I have currently am active at the moment is short the Aussie based on weaker inflation data. So looking for a flush in the uh, the oil price as well, okay? Given the fact that you had weaker GDP today as well, it's very surprising to see oil prices certainly pushing higher. But from my interpretation and my limited understanding, I do expect the uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi certainly to be flushed. Okay, so 
and, I, and obviously it'll take the FTSE 100 down with it as well. Okay, now now that I've explained the fundamental backdrop, let's look at the uh, technical picture. Now the FTSE 100, uh, I did explain to you that we had an inverted head and shoulders formation. You've had a bottoming tail at these previous resistance equals support. The market has bounced off very, very handsomely. 60 minute chart, you are now into resistance and turbulence of 6320. That will be your resistance zone for now, unless oil prices make a significant uh, move higher. In the resistance that can be seen here at 6320 as well on the FTSE 100, and that is your resistance zone. The inverted head and shoulders formation target was the pivot low was 6225. Let me just quickly uh, calculate this for you. So the IHS was 6225 minus the neckline. So the neckline was around 6275. Okay, so that gave you a target of 6325 on the upside. So basically a 50 point move and that certainly has been exhausted now as you can see 6320 was well 6322 was hit on the upside so the inverted head and shoulders formation short squeeze certainly has uh, dissipated and you are looking for a flush from my perspective down to the 6290 potentially to the 6280 zone that's what the uh, ideal level will be on the downside okay that's my uh, interpretation now in terms of the rest of the markets let's just bring up the alternative markets for you one second eu youtube here we go okay let's bring up the european markets given the fact that the euro usd is currently trading at the 1.1350 zone therefore you would expect the uh, european markets to be under pressure given the stronger euro now you had this hns formation which we obviously close at 3066 we then short squeeze subsequently thereafter okay so everything is going working like clockwork in terms of technicals thus far okay now again taking the pivot high could take it to the next pivot high so you are looking at resistance in this 3130 gap fill level but from my limited understanding once again okay i do not expect the gap to close given the fact that the boj has failed to do qe yes you've had oil certainly helping uh, certainly help lift the markets higher to a large extent but from my understanding this gap should not be closed due to the fact that we had the Asian market certainly weaker overnight due to the lack of action from the uh, BOJ. Okay, and also you had this symmetrical wedge. So if I take the pivot low from here, connect this across, bear with me. Okay, in that zone, you are looking to retest that zone as well. Okay, so even if we do go ahead and close the gap, which is very unlikely from my understanding, again, limited understanding. The market is king. The market will dictate, folks. We can only do so much. But from certainly what I'm expecting here is oil certainly to reverse, given the fact that we have weaker GDP data from the US. Okay. And given the ongoing concerns globally, etc., etc. I don't need to go into detail. But for now, come on, certainly coming into resistance as well. Looking for a nice reversal here. Okay. So going over to the daily chart as well on the euro stocks. Again, you have this inside bar. Uh, certainly looking for consolidation looking for potential weakness okay now let's bring up the rest of the markets okay let's bring up the german dax and uh, the german dax at the moment uh, certainly uh, an impressive and stellar reversal uh, we went and retested previous resistance equal support obviously we bounced handsomely from there the 60 minute chart hit a pivot lower gap fill at uh, 10 120 again we've rallied almost 200 points so certainly looking for a reversal now okay you have horizontal resistance here which is expected to hold obviously you've got gap fill here horizontal resistance here horizontal resistance here and the zone is really looking to hold at 10 320 level and therefore looking to uh, subsequently reverse uh, if we do reverse then we are looking to retest that 10 150 zone below ideally you are looking at 10 to 30 support on the uh, german dax so watch out for that zone Certainly looking for a weakness given the lower lows and lower highs are expected to resume. Bringing up the 10 minute chart. A lot of trend lines, a lot of mess here. Let me just clean this up for you folks. Okay, so taking the pivot highs which are here. You could obviously close a gap which was impressive. I didn't expect that gap to close at all. Certainly shows some strength for the German DAX and looking for an unfilled gap above. But for now, horizontal resistance looking for a potential uh, retracement we could be uh, in for a potential inverted head and shoulders formation reversal and that certainly should be interesting so all eyes on that potential formation okay so bringing up the french cac now cac is the weakest out of all of them bear that in mind folks the french cac is the weakest link out of all the european indices and is looking to potentially target this unfilled gap down below at 4350 60 minute chart you can clearly see that we are into the diagonal trend line below lower lows lower highs and obviously we've looked to uh, potentially close that gap as well which is quite impressive 
So that 4550 zone certainly is a solid, solid area to potentially short the European equities, from my understanding. Okay, right, and looking for that unfilled gap below, folks, 4350. So watch out for something's brewing on the French cat and uh, in for a, uh, a stellar sell off. That's my understanding, and that's my interpretation thus far. Okay. And we've seen the FTSE 100, okay, so I'm not going to go over that. Let's just bring up the chart on the Euro, because the Euro certainly is interesting. Given the fact that if I look at a 60-minute chart on the Euro USD, uh, it certainly is. Let me just clean this up for you. Certainly have bounced uh, thus far. Let's go to a four-hour chart. And uh, certainly seem to have broken out somewhat, okay. It has been quite a seller move, uh, you, although you are now coming into potential resistance up here, so watch out. Certainly looking at potential resistance, so keep an eye on the uh, the actual uh, Euro, uh, Euro, European or Euro USD. So this will be interesting to observe. Okay, uh, let's just cross verify that with the uh, the actual uh, do, uh, German Bund. The Bund is always very very important. Let's just see exactly where the Bund is positioned. Now you can clearly see something on the Bund which is very interesting. Okay, now let me just bring up the daily chart first of all. Now the German Bund has held and, and bounced off that pivot support low. And the four hour chart, if you look at the four hour chart, you clearly see an inverted head and shoulders formation. Now, when the bond is going to go higher, what does that mean? It generally means that the euro is potentially going to go lower. And if the euro is going to go lower, then that will potentially drive European equities higher. So, again, that's certainly something to observe that relationship. It's going to be interesting. Okay. Very, very interesting. But. Again, for now, let's just keep observing. Uh, a, a weak bond certainly means a, 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 a stronger euro. A stronger euro is obviously weak for equities. Now, we do need to, before we do attempt to drive higher, we do need to close this gap below. So you are looking for weakness in bond for now, okay? And then uh, subsequently we'll see thereafter, okay? But for now, you are looking for certain weakness, okay? First of all, that gap needs to close and then we'll have to reassess. So 60-minute chart, all eyes on that potential gap, folks. Once that gap is closed, then I'll look to potentially reassess. But for now, looking for a stronger euro, weaker equities, and uh, we shall see exactly how the market reacts thereafter. Okay, so that certainly is something to uh, to observe. Okay, for now, go to a 60-minute chart. You can clearly see it here, folks. Okay, so you're looking for that gap fill below, and that gap needs to close. And again, you've got this inverted head and shoulders formation. So if the bond starts to move higher, then you'll see equities move along with that. But for now you are looking to potentially close that gap. So all eyes in that gap before any flush. Now, again, the German Bund could certainly flush lower uh, regardless. So you could see a, a straight flush on the German Bund here with the double top potentially in, and you could test a 200 MA, and that could obviously send the euro spiking higher, which in turn sends the uh, equity markets lower. So that certainly is a possibility as well. Okay, so everything is a possibility in this marketplace. It certainly needs to be observed very carefully, especially given the fact that Copper certainly seems to have potentially put in the top as well on the daily chart and certainly has been lower since. Okay, now a lot of it obviously will hinge on the uh, European market, so watch out for that. But given the fact that the BOJ, as you can see with the Nikkei, is red bearish candle, the next potential support is gap fill below. Given the fact there's lack of BOJ or QE from the BOJ, then therefore it's a bearish bias on the. Uh, the actual Nikkei and bearish bias and Nikkei is bearish on the uh, the actual markets as well. Again, the only thing that's keeping this market afloat is oil. Once oil starts to reverse and move lower, then you have the lack of QE from BOJ and FOMC, adding the fact that you have weaker commodities as well, and the deflation trade kicks in with equities moving lower. Again, equities equal inflation, hence the reason why oil goes higher, equities go higher. Okay, I think that's a market wrap. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Make sure you visit Tradesignaler.com as well to uh, download the latest app and uh, be sure to visit cfds.com your specialist in spread betting and cfd brokerage and take advantage of that 25 percent bonus goodbye now